Oh, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, we are in South Holland, Illinois, and even more specifically than that, we are here in front of the South Holland Oasis. Now, for those of you who did not grow up in the uh, Chicagoland area, the Oasis here are kind of like uh, rest areas or travel plazas that were actually built over top the road. I remember um, my father lived in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My mother lived in Valparaiso, Indiana. So I often travel between the, between the two homes and always love stopping at these oases. Unfortunately, there's not very many left. Um, there was, uh, there used to be all over. I always love stopping in. You get out, go to the bathroom, stretch your legs. There'd be restaurants inside. Growing up, there was always there was always Wendy's inside the oasises. Unfortunately, they've been um, they've been tearing them down. There's not a lot left. I don't know how many are left. The one that I went to the most was the Hinsdale Oasis. That's where my mom and dad would often meet to exchange me, and um, and that's gone. That's been torn down. I know a lot of the other ones have been torn down. This one's still here. The Lincoln. Uh, the South Holland Lincoln Oasis, but uh, I don't know how many other are others are around Besides this if anyone knows which other oasis are open leave a comment in the comment section Because uh, I didn't know I saw them tearing down the other ones. I wasn't sure if there was still any left So I was very excited to stop here and check this out. So please follow me see how the traffic passes right under the oasis I remember you could eat your food while looking out at all the traffic. And uh, I remember when a big old truck comes underneath, you can actually feel it, kind of feel it rattle the oasis. Now this is a major bummer. The uh, oasis actually closed temporarily. And it uh, looks like there's a sign over here Sorry, restrooms closed, power outage, uh, no running water. Oh wait, is it? Oh, okay. The Oasis is open. I guess they're just the restrooms. Okay, I came in and a lady back there yelled at me for, for coming in, saying they're closed. He said, everything's closed, all the restaurants are closed. I said, okay, if I just walk around? She said, no. No, it's not okay, we're closed, get out. So, we'll be uh, leaving the Oasis here. See, so, yeah, I made your bummer. I uh, haven't been in one of these Oasises in a while, and I was hoping this one would be opened so I could uh, actually go inside and look around, but got yelled at for uh, walking in the front door. So uh, maybe maybe next time we come through, we can check out uh, check out the Oasis. Yeah, it's a real bummer. I really wanted, I was really excited to go inside the Oasis. It's been a while since I've been in one, um, since they've been tearing them all down. I don't know, it says the power's out, so I don't know if that's necessarily indicative that this one's closing down or if this one's uh, not long for uh, for this world. It did look like there was workers in there, the McDonald's, there was people behind the counter, just all the power uh, was off. And then someone got really grumpy at me for walking in there. Just, I asked, is it okay if I walk around? No, no, not okay. Um, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, big bummer, but uh, hopefully, hopefully get a chance to come back. But anyways, we are, uh, we are, I took, I, 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 I rested a little bit at my mom's, but uh, it is now time to head west as we continue our great adventure. The goal from here on uh, the next week is to uh, visit as many state fairs as possible. Got uh, a, 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 some state fairs lined up in a big loop that I am planning on uh, planning on knocking out this upcoming week. So I hope hope you guys enjoy this. Hope you guys like the state fairs because we're going to see a variety. Well, hopefully we will be seeing a variety of state fairs. You never know. 
I might die, who knows? Might, something might happen, my car might wreck, I might not get to a single state fair. But the plan is to get to, uh, to, get to as many state fairs as possible this week. There's a lot going on right now. Um, at the same time, the, uh, the 20th seems to be a stop date, so 20th seems to be the last day for a lot of the state fairs. So we're gonna be going and trying to hit as many as we can in that time period. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to, you, know, you gotta look at the, the, the Midwest area as being kind of the, you know, the heartland of the country, kind of the place that where, where state fairs uh, really make a lot of sense, where agricultural, agriculture is big and these state fairs are, uh, are big, uh, big gathering places. So uh, please, let's head back on to that long, lonesome road. I remember driving over this big rock quarry here, just past the oasis. We have landed in Volo, Illinois. Wanted to stop by and check in with the Volo Auto Museum. They're always adding new stuff here at the Volo Auto Museum. Every time I go, there's something new added. And uh, when they say Auto Museum, that's kind of a um, a misnomer because there's way more here than automobiles. There is some cool cars, some movie cars, but there's also animatronic bands, dinosaurs. Just a, a real, a real is really expanded from its original concept as an auto museum, and has added some uh, some very cool stuff over the years. So let's check out the Volo Auto Museum. As you can see there, it says Volo Museum 33 plus exhibits. Here we is the main entrance. Here, of course, they have the Jurassic Gardens. Out front here we have a bat signal so they could summon Batman anytime they want to the Volo Auto Museum. As we head in we have a collection of bat vehicles. Of course you have Adam West's uh, bat cycle from the uh, 1960s series. I love this because you can see this this actually detaches here so uh, Robin rides this and then if they want to launch Robin, they can shoot him off in his own little cart. Then we have the 1989 Keaton Mobile. It says this was actually used in the production of the movie. Very cool. My two favorite Batman here, Adam West and uh, Michael Keaton. And here as you enter the uh, Volo Museum, they have a little pizza parlor here and they have several animatronic bands. Now I asked the lady over at the pizza counter when they play, she said they can be played every 15 minutes. I guess it's to let their, uh, let the, the, I guess the air compressor fill back up. But uh, she said that she thinks it's been 15 minutes. She said, go ask the ice cream counter to, uh, to play uh, one of the bands here. All right, talked to the lady at the ice cream parlor. She said she'll be activating the pirates over here momentarily. Oh, here they go. Oh, very cool. Over here they have a Cordio boy. I uh, don't know if he uh, if he actually functions, but I guess he is an uh, is an animatronic who plays the accordion. And this here they have the four little shavers. It says this is uh, an experimental Chuck E. Cheese project. They only made three of these as prototypes, and apparently this is the. Uh, this is the only one uh, currently in existence. It's pretty amazing. It's like the four, uh, four members of the barber shop quartet. That guy there in the blue getting his, uh, getting his hair cut. You can see there's so much stuff here in every corner. Up here we have the bicycle 
from Pee-wee's Big Adventure hanging in the rafters next to that iconic clown there. Of course, very recently uh, Pee-wee passed away, which is very sad. I absolutely loved this movie. It was one of my favorite movies as a child. I think it kind of, the first introduction to like surreal humor and I, I loved the uh, Pee-wee's Playhouse TV show as well. Yeah, all my childhood is dangling in here. We got a collection of gremlins. Over here we have the uh, the brain gremlin from uh, from Gremlins 2. Gremlins 2, one of my favorite movies. And then uh, I'll have a gremlin, a gremlin bride right there. The dancing gremlin too. Gremlins probably probably my uh, my top five favorite movies of all time. Still absolutely adore the design of the creatures. So you got one more, one more gremlin over here hiding behind the pizza pizza lamp. They've added this little gift shop here. Oh, you see this this rather surprised uh, man here. But looks like he's uh, looks like he's ready for Christmas. A big organ over here as well as some more uh, animated musicians, another accordion boy, and uh, his little uh, drummer friend there. Oh, wait, here they go. The, the drums, the cymbals banging there. Oh, that's really cool. You can see his fingers moving on the accordion. good friend Zoltar and of course whenever we see Zoltar we got to give him give him our hard-earned cash so he can tell us a little bit about the future I am Zoltar the great gypsy listen carefully for I am about to tell you your fortune recently you had to make some judgments as others may be judging you a wise man makes his own decisions. An ignorant man follows the public opinion. A mountain is composed of tiny grains of earth. The ocean is made of tiny drops of water. Even so, life is but an endless series of little details, actions, speeches, and thoughts. And the consequences, whether good or bad, of even the least of them are so far-reaching. The more we judge, the less we love. Patience and thought will show you the right way. Those are some wise words, Zoltar. I don't know if I've ever gotten that spiel before. Interesting. Get an opportunity here to ask the brain. There is the brain right there. Let's give the brain some of our some of our cash. Okay, all right. Let's see. It seems my oh, he's turning, has turning the knobs of his full crappium capacitor. No nudifier. But I still seem to have enough power to map at least some of your future. <laughs> did you put your money in? I did. Did you put your money in? Yes. Yes. Answer me! I'm answering you! Good! <laughs> Turning these knobs here. It's happening. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> well, it seems I'm going to have to replace the whole damn stud nudifier. Sorry, no refunds. No refunds? <laughs> Jeez, brain. I feel, uh, feel like you cheated me. So this is the newest exhibit here at, uh, at the Volo, the Titanic exhibit. I got a timed ticket to uh, go visit the Titanic. It's the Titanic anchor right there, a replica of the Titanic's anchor. Then we have a replica of one of the Titanic lifeboats, we all know. Uh, we all know they didn't have a lot of those. King of the world!
because it's the actual size. All right, so uh, let's check out the Titanic exhibit. Oh wow! Oh wow! Just look at this. See all the old cars, all the old outfits, <laughs> all the old luggage there. Now this here, it says, is the only exact replica of the uh, the the only car on the Titanic. Of course, if you watch the Titanic film, there's a very um, a very uh, very memorable scene that takes place in uh, the car, and apparently in real life it would have been uh, would have been this car here. I mean, this is the only exact replica. The the, the car that the scene took place in is at the bottom of the ocean. But this one looks exactly like that car. Stories of people that lost their life on the Titanic. This is how many children died on the Titanic with a little dog puppet. 53 children in total. That's really sad. Front of the ship here, you can see the moon out there. And uh-oh, what's that lurking up? on our right side. Talks about how uh, 44 lifeboats were removed part of departure so that uh, first class passengers can have a better view of the ocean. Yikes. This is why did over 1,500 people have to die? Apparently they accidentally locked their binoculars away and, and lost the keys. Um, they used the wrong colored flares and apparently they were uh, just too busy to listen to all the uh, warning calls from other ships. Shows you the slope of the deck at different points. This is the 1.50 a.m. slope of the deck. This is only 15 minutes later. You can see how high it's gone up. And then just 13 minutes after this, it was this much higher. And then two minutes later, it was underwater. Peek out these windows here. You can see uh, some friends of Dorothy. So this is their showroom in here where they sell uh, antique cars or uh, interesting cars. So you can actually come here and buy a car. And uh, I don't know if this is for sale here. This is the, the most authentic and unrestored General Lee in existence. So I don't know, come down here to uh, Volo and get yourself a uh, General Lee. Over here in the corner, they have the world's fastest jet-powered outhouse. I don't know how many jet-powered outhouses there are. You can see the wheels on there. Oh yeah, and you actually sit on the toilet seat. There's a urinal right there. The tires on the ground. I guess it's, uh, it's, it's jet-powered. That's pretty nuts. I guess you wouldn't want to get an accident in this plastic outhouse. We have the fastest outhouse in here. We also have the fastest bar stool. And so you sit on the bar stool there. It's a V8 powered, which probably means it's fast. And yeah, go flying around on a uh, bar stool. And just hanging out here in the showroom, we have Shrek, Fiona, Donkey, and the Shrek babies. So we head down this hallway here to the uh, military building. Oh yeah, you can see, uh, See the uh, piles of sandbags, the guy in the gas mask. You got Rin Tin Tin over here. So heading into the uh, military museum, the Volo Armed Forces Adventure in here. It says, you are now entering a combat zone. And some guests may have more so maybe be more sensitive than others to our action-packed battle seats and heart-pounding sound effects. Oh yeah, count me in. Oh yeah. This, you got the guy in the telephone there. There's this guy here, smoking a stogie. So here are all the military noises happening. The truck here with the big gun on it. Got his whole truck with a gun pointed at this one guy here. He's like, please, please, don't shoot. Now I found military museums can often be a little dry. This definitely spices uh, 
spices things up here with all this flashing lights and noise and action going on amongst these uh, figures. Yeah, you see the big, big tank here. This is a German tank. Look that heart pounding action going on in every direction. Jeez. Oh my gosh. He started firing his machine gun there. A creepy set of eyes peering at us. With a charging soldier there. Soldier here in the uh, in the bushes. We got some Nazis peeking out here. Boo! Thumbs down to you, Nazis. Probably someone in the comments section will get mad at me for uh, for saying that. This exhibit talks about MASH, the show MASH, the uh, Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. And there is a uh, a nurse there taking care of uh, taking care of this wounded soldier. Yeah, this guy down here, he's got some uh, some serious issues going on. They got more cars uh, for sale in here, but also some movie cars. The car from Mad Max there. You can see uh, over at the end here, we got uh, Mr. Uh, Mel Gibson with his dog. We have Speed Racer's car, the Mach 5. And then over here, have the Star Wars section. You got the, uh, the uh, land speeder, couple of couple of Jawas, got uh, Mr. Chewbacca back there, a Wookie. Oh look, there's a Millennium Falcon flying over top of everything. And stormtroopers and C-3PO back there. Oh look, there goes R2, it's lighting up and uh, spinning his head around. Over here we got the. Ecto-1 converted uh, ambulance slash hearse into a uh, ghost fighting vehicle. Oh, there we have Peter Venkman standing in front of uh, Ghost Rider's motorcycle. Here's the Pep Boys, fiberglass sculpture of the three Pep Boy mascots. And it says this is one of six of these ever made. The hearse from uh, Terminator 3. See Arnie there holding the uh, casket. Now, Terminator 1, great movie. Terminator 2, great movie. And then they really struggled after that. They keep making, they keep making uh, sequel after sequel, and uh, no one likes them. But then they like, okay, forget that sequel. We're gonna make another one that's even better. And no one likes that one either. Maybe you know, sometimes maybe it's better just to uh, just to stop. Okay, before we head into the next car room, you have the Museum of Crime and Punishment here. A whole uh, self-contained section, a Crime and Punishment Museum. It takes two, to two tokens, which is two dollars, so two extra dollars to enter this section. I did uh, grab a few of the Volo tokens there. So we will put them, oh, Put them in here, and then push our way through. All right, things are about to get really intense here in the Crime and Punishment Museum. First thing we're greeted with, Bonnie and Clyde's car. And there's a lot of uh, Bonnie and Clyde death cars that, uh, that circled the country as kind of a, a go-to um, oddities. Exhibit. So this is obviously a, a recreation. Um, the uh, the movie Death Car is in uh, Alcatraz East in Pigeon Forge. The actual Death Car is in a uh, is in Whiskey Pete's Casino, uh, right across the uh, California line into Nevada. But uh, yeah, you can see their car infamously riddled with bullets. Yeah, they did not take any chances. They wanted to make sure these two lover birds 
were lover dead. It's a prison. Over here you can see the uh, poor accommodations there for this gentleman. He has to poop in that bucket. Rats eat his food and there's a bunch of plaster all over the floor. And apparently his crime was touching the cars at the Volo Auto Museum. Like a cop here. You make noise with the cop. Let me out of here. I didn't touch a car. I just wanted to see it real, real close. We have uh, John Dillinger's death mask there. I don't think anyone has a more famous death mask than Mr. John Dillinger. This is Charles Justice, a very ominous name for the man that invented the electric chair. Apparently he did this while he was actually a prisoner. So I guess they were like, hey, we know you're a violent criminal and all, but uh, could you invent a chair that kills people? And he's like, I'm right on it. And ironically enough, he would be killed by his own invention. He would be freed from prison, go out on parole, but later commit a crime of murder and be brought back and executed in his own invention, the electric chair. Old Sparky, if you will. And uh, yeah, that must have been, that must have been ironic. Killed by the only thing you truly loved. Oh yeah, there's just a, uh, a random bust of Marlon Brando on the wall <laughs> right there. It's a replica of the first gas chamber invented in 1911. And uh, who's in there being, uh, being gassed? Oh, an unpleasant fate for any to meet. I don't even know how I walked past this on my way in. We have a iron lung with uh, this, uh, this guy here uh, living a uh, life in the iron lung. You see they actually have the mirror there so you can uh, stare at yourself all day long. Here's the Ford versus Ferrari exhibit. I've never seen the, uh, the movie, but I assume it's about two cars that uh, maybe race each other, maybe they fight somehow, maybe they like uh, square off in some sort of demolition derby. Is this a Ford? Is this the Ford here? Which one's the Ford, which one's the Ferrari? It, it doesn't say. Oh yes, that says Ford. It says so right on the hood. So then, uh, is this, are these the Ferraris? Oh look, you see the characters from the movie in uh, cardboard form. From here we enter another room of cars. And this we have the, this odd looking car here. This is apparently from The Mask 2, The Son of Mask. So uh, even though uh, I've not seen that movie, still an amazing car. Of course, everybody's been talking about Barbie. Have not got a chance to see, uh, to see the movie. I do want to check it out since everyone's been talking about it. But uh, here we have Barbie's car, and this is Barbie's car from Epcot. So they'd have this at Epcot parades. Barbie would ride in the Cadillac here. But originally, this says this was uh, Cruella de Vil's car. It was painted up. You see, yeah, I see Cruella back there. So Cruella de Vil would ride in this. And then after they quit using it for Barbie, uh, Miss Piggy started riding in it. So some very, uh, very big names have ridden in this parade car. Here is one of Elvis's Cadillacs. And one thing I've learned from going to lots of museums, lots of different car museums, Elvis had a lot of Cadillacs. As a matter of fact, he had more Cadillacs than anyone else in the world. He owned the largest number of Cadillacs, the biggest Cadillac collection in the world. Behind Elvis's Cadillac here, we have none other than King Kong with his glowing eyes. He's waving that poor little lady in his hands that he has, uh, that he has captured. Oh, the mighty, <laughs> the mighty cog. Oh my goodness. And the Charlie Chaplin mobile over there with uh, Charlie Chaplin's head bursting out through the roof. And we just visited uh, Stephen King's house not too long ago. And here's another Stephen King creation. This is uh, Christine. The, the movie that tried to find a way to make cars scary. You have the haunted car, Christine, right here. 
Oh wait, that red light just came on. Oh, look at this. You can see the evil exuding from, uh, from this car. Here we have Grandpa Munster's race car, the Dragula. It's like a drag as in drag racing and Dracula as in the famous vampire. So mixing vampires and racing to form Dragula. Of course, this would expire Rob Zombie's amazing song, Dragula. And then Rob Zombie would later direct the monster movie, which everyone hated except uh, for me and Jen. And one of my favorite cars from television and film is the, uh, the Batmobile here, the uh, 1960s era Batmobile. Oh no, you see the chains rattling there by the, uh, by the Xenomorph. And one of my just all time favorite movies and favorite movie cars, National Lampoon's Vacation. I remember um, my mom let me stay up late to watch this with the family. One of the one of the first movies I like got to stay up late past my bedtime and uh, and watch a movie. And I remember just just a loving this movie. And it is, I go back every few years and uh, and rewatch it. Love the uh, the truckster design. It's all the all the headlights there. The eight headlights. They have the uh, the dead ant up there on top of the car. And sadly, even the uh, dog's leash tied to the uh, bumper. And this is Johnny Cash's guitar car. This, this was made for Johnny Cash so he could drive around in a giant guitar. That's pretty, pretty amazing. The circus tent invites us into showroom four. There's more cars this way. We had... Uh, through here, oh, what do we got in here? Okay, got the shark from uh, Finding Nemo, and then uh, Mike and Sully from uh, Monsters, Inc. And this is one of the craziest things I've ever seen. This is, I've never seen anything like this. This is a trackless train. So it's a train engine, but you can just drive it on the road. It just has like rubber tires. It's, uh, that's so weird. What, what is even the practical application for that? This is the Brute Boss Hog here. It says that this is the first monster truck ever made, built in uh, 1975. It's the lifeboat from uh, Captain Phillips. I think we can peek inside over here. Oh yeah, you can cram a lot of people into this lifeboat. Look up there, it says fake, some fake bullet holes from the movie. This building here says the vault, historical, treasures and ongoing exhibit we have uh, the Simpson family there greeting us as we head into showroom number four oh wow yeah there's a lot going on in here we have this pink VW uh, bus I don't know if this is somehow Barbie related We've got military vehicles in here, got uh, Herbie the Herbie the Love Bug. Oh, oh, he moves. He moved. You saw it. There he goes. We have a penny smasher here. This is an old school one. You need to put the actual coins in uh, and manually turn the crank. Let's see what you can get here. You can get a uh, a mystery machine from Scooby Doo. Mater from Cars, you get Herbie the Love Bug, or you can get the Batmobile Kapow. I think I'll get one of these for uh, for Jen. She loves the uh, loves the uh, 1960s uh, Batman, so we're gonna get her a uh, a Batmobile here. I was able to I was able to find enough change in my pocket, a penny and two quarters there. Let's see if we have to to line it up. Make sure we got the right car lined up. So change in, and then we crank. Oh, I can feel the pressure of the penny that fell down in there. Let's see, and there we go. Nice shiny Batmobile smashed penny there. It says Kapow on it from like when 
Batman would punch people. See Mickey dancing there with the uh, brooms that he brought to life. This giant roller skate shaped car here. And I mean never. We have a double decker bus from Disney. It says this double decker bus originally started at Disneyland, is then moved to Epcot. And I guess it would have, uh, they would use it in parades. They would have characters on top there waving out into the crowd. Some more Disney parade cars. These were used at uh, Animal Kingdom in Mickey's Jammin' Jungle Parade. Look at that, it's actually got the uh, carpet and lamp from Aladdin there on the hood. I don't know if this would be driven by maybe Donald Duck. And then we have Minnie's uh, parade vehicle right there. And there we have uh, Pappy driving a, uh, a rat rod. We have uh, a car uh, built like a uh, German military helmet. This is the Batman Tumbler from the Chris Nolan Batman movies. A very different version of the Batmobile. And then uh, Joker there warning us once again, please do not touch the cars or he'll blow us all up with those grenades. There is a piano mobile, a driving piano. There's so much crazy stuff here. Looks like we can uh, activate, activate the piano with one of our tokens. Does it? Oh, there it goes. You can see a piano playing there under the hood. Oh yeah, look at that. I guess it's automatic, so you don't have to worry about playing while you're trying to drive. Jeez, a tank turret just spun around and pointed at me. I was not expecting that. And just look at this. Oh my goodness. You got three mold arama machines here. It says these Disneyland toy factories were built for the 1964 World's Fair. We've got uh, Donald Duck there, we got Goofy, and uh, Mickey Mouse. These are uh, $10 a piece. This robot here is telling us the story of the Moldoramas. A couple interesting things about these Disney Moldorama machines. They have the little uh, figures on the inside as a little additional flair. And if you notice here, it says, and you can color them too. Now, I've heard before that they would actually sell painting sets so you could paint your mold after, uh, after you had it made. Now, I do believe I have a Mickey Mouse. I believe I have a Goofy. But I don't think I have a Donald Duck. So let's fire up the machine and make ourselves a duck. All right, here we go. Yeah, you can see Goofy and Donald pushing the two pieces of the mold together while it makes our Donald. And there we go, there's my Donald. There he is. Wow. Yeah, I don't think I had a Donald. Somehow I've not acquired a Donald over my travels. But there you go. Just got a little bit of extra wax there on his face. Plastic, actually. It's not wax. But uh, yeah, there we go. He looks great. And I changed my mind. I'm just going to go ahead and get a, uh, a full set of the uh, Volo molds here. Oh no, Mickey, what, what? Oh no, Mickey, what happened to you? What'd they do to you, Mickey? Oh my gosh, his face is melted off. No, no, <laughs> what I? Well, let's see how Goofy turns out. 
Oh, there we go. Goofy looks good. Goofy looks good. There we go. Nice, sparkling, goofy next to uh, Body Horror Mickey. And they also just have a great collection of these uh, little toddler rides that you would find um, outside of grocery stores. I remember these as a kid. A real amazing collection. Well, this one is like actually has like a driving simulator built into it. So let's try this one. We'll put the, the token in here. And then, uh, oh, there we go. So we got to drive. There we got to imagine keep on the road, avoid the other cars. Oh, it veers bad. Okay. I'm getting the red light. I think that's bad. So I'm having a really hard time staying on the road. I've just gotten in a million, a million car accidents here. The Cat in the Hats car, along with the terrifying Michael Myers cat in the hat. Yeah, I love all these uh, coin-operated rides. You can ride on the uh, Esso Tiger there. You got some spaceships, but I think this is my favorite, riding on, uh, riding on Superman's back. We actually demo some of these. Let's see, uh, see what it was like when you ride on Superman's back. Oh, there he goes. A bumpy ride there on uh, on Superman's back, and then uh, we have the UFO over there. Let's hit the uh, UFO button. And, you know, look what it's like to ride in that space UFO, making space noises as well. Oh, look at that! Right on Polly the parrot. And look who we got here, my little buddy Peppy, the musical clown. You can uh, make him dance. Each button operates a different limb of the clown. Got one token to make uh, Peppy to make Peppy dance. But what's he saying? He's being really, really quiet. Okay, you see, put foot there. His foot dances. Make his foot, his feet dance. But also, you can move his, his hand. Move his other hand, move his hand and his foot at the same time. Peppy the dancing clown. You can't really hear his song. It's really turned down, so I'll make up my own song. Peppy the dancing clown. He hates it when you frown. You better hope he doesn't come to your town. Peppy the dancing clown. Dance, dance, dance. Clown, clown, clown. Pep, pep, pep. E, e, e. I'm the clown that likes to make you not frown. And if you do frown, I will come and hunt you down. And oh, wasn't expecting to see you here. It's the king. My, uh, my friend Jared uh, with, with the kings. He put this king here at Volo. He uh, set this up. And they, they have the, uh, the king here, the original Elvis style king, but also they have King Cat, which they switched to in the uh, 1980s as a takeoff of Michael Jackson. Now it's one token per show. Let's, uh, let's start out with, let's just start out with the classic king, the uh, Jared style king here. The... Oh, doing. good, he's working. Take a look. Woo! I used to play in Vegas, and you had to show your security badge to get backstage. Well, one time I didn't have my badge, and there was a new security guy there, and he didn't recognize me. He wouldn't let me in. I told one of my people to call the colonel. Ten minutes later, he brought me a bucket of chicken, man. I'm telling you. I still love Vegas, and you will too after this one. Oh, we're gonna sing a, we're gonna sing an Elvis tune here. Yeah, singing an Elvis tune. Now let's give uh, King Cat an uh, opportunity to sing the uh, Michael Jackson version of the King. Let's see, we gotta set it to 
Set it to Michael Jackson there. And put our token in. Hold up, everybody. We have a very special guest in the house. Sure to be a thriller. It's not a smooth criminal. It's Chuck E. Cheese's own King Cat. Oh. He roars. The dogs are so dumb. Did you hear about the dog that put lipstick on its forehead? It wanted to make up its mind. <laughs> if you want a dog to like you, all you gotta do is feel it. If you want King Cat to entertain you, then what I'm gonna sing is beat it. He's gonna sing beat it. Just beat it. Beat it. No one wants to be defeated. Finally here, in between the two kings, we have the Beagles, one of the early uh, Chuck E. Cheese side projects. So uh, we will go back to the dial. We'll switch it from uh, King Cat to the Beagles. And uh... Hey, knock, knock. Who's there? You. You who? Baby, you can drive my car. Baby, you can drive my car. And then they go straight into a, straight into a Beatles tune there of some sort. You know, they're the Beagles, which sounds like the Beatles, so they sing Beatles songs. The jet over here, a red pig. It says, ride the hog. And then uh, they have two Batmobiles, one unfinished and one bright and shiny Batmobile there. So we leave this room, we have a snarling dinosaur over here and the Jurassic Park Jeep it says upgrade your ticket and visit Jurassic Gardens today and I think we may just do that and here we have the carousel building of course it is the summer of carousels here on the carpetbagger channel and uh, they do have a carousel here in the uh, carousel pavilion and music hall let's head in and uh, Check out the carousel. Now they do have a carousel in here. Unfortunately, it does not look like we're gonna get to ride it today. There is no uh, ride attendant here uh, at the carousel. So we'll just have to, uh, have to enjoy it with our eyes at the different horses here. I do like this one here. It's a very interesting horse. It actually has like the natural wood color to it like some brass and it says uh, Sanders Carousel Company. And this is interesting, carousels go by many names, merry-go-rounds, now I've heard that, carry us alls, roundabouts and jennies. Carry us alls, I'm gonna start calling them, from now on I'm gonna call all carousels, carry us alls. And this, uh, this face here, that is uh, particularly monstrous. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I forgot they had this here. This is the jet from the Harrier Jet featured in Pepsi Where's My Jet. This is the jet used in the Pepsi commercial where they said if you earned enough points, you could win a, uh, a Harrier jet. And then uh, one, uh, one kid decided he was gonna save up enough points and eventually saved up the, uh, the points needed to win the Harrier jet. And uh, Pepsi said, no, it was a joke. And he actually took them to court. There was a legal case where the kid was trying to, uh, to get a jet, he said, I just want my jet. And it languished in court for forever. There's a, like I said, a whole documentary about it on, um, on Netflix. And this is the, the jet they used in the commercial, the prop jet used in the uh, legendary Pepsi commercial. That's, that's amazing. That's a piece of pop culture right there. Apparently too, it was also used in True Lies and The Avengers. So this, uh, this prop jet, has been around, but of course I, I, I know it as the, uh, as the Pepsi jet. So movie trains here. This was the train used in the movie Inception. And then over here we have the train used in Will Smith's Wild Wild West. 
I don't think we can go inside, but I think we can go up these steps and take a peek inside. Oh, and look at this down here. That is the uh, the wheelchair used in the movie by the villain uh, Doc Loveless. That's pretty cool. And they were kind enough to give me a new Mickey at the front desk because my Mickey's uh, face belted off. Of Jurassic Jen's mini golf. That's what I'm gonna start calling Jen from now on. Jurassic Jen. See the T-Rex head, all the little dinosaurs out here on the course. Oh, it looks like these are like where these ones are like wearing golf visors. Got some tricky shots out here. The old loop-de-loo there. I guess that's an obstacle, a little dangling chunk of metal. And uh, look at this. <laughs> look at this there. Yeah, he's got the uh, the golf visor on, trying to uh, trying to golf with his little tiny T-Rex arms. Oh man, golf is not the sport for a T-Rex. Carnotosaurus here is having a little easier of a time swinging his club. And it looks like when you are done, when you reach the final hole, you just shoot your ball into the belly of a T-Rex. Now it is time to head in to the Jurassic Gardens there. You got the T-Rex, the Brachiosaurus out here as we head through these gates. Oh, and look at <laughs> the Triceratops trash can if you have any extra garbage. Toss that into his mouth before you head inside the gardens. Yeah, this is a wonderful little indoor, air-conditioned dino walk. Got the, got, oh, they got the frilled version, the movie version of the, uh, of the, uh, the Lophosaurus there. Hopefully he doesn't squirt anything on me. Got a raptor attack right there. The raptors crawling on the back of this poor defenseless iguanodon. Oh, look at this. What are you doing there, you silly, you silly stegosaurus trying to, trying to climb a tree? Or maybe he's just trying to push the tree down. It's a dino lab. A little baby, a little baby dino there. I guess we could take him, take him out of the egg. Hey there, little guy. So I'll just put it back in the egg. I don't think he's, don't think he's quite ready yet. This is the e Irritator. The Irritator. I've never heard of the Irritator before. I guess he was just very irritating to all the other dinosaurs. Another pterodactyl. So we head through the rib cage here. Watch out for raptors. Oh no. So many raptors. Spinosaurus. Here is Dinah. You can see she's a member of the of the staff here, Miss uh, Miss Dinah. Now these are Moldville brand uh, mold machines. Moldville. Sometimes they will they will sell uh, some rare molds online. They, they make them with their own machines. And then uh, they have a Mold of the Month Club that I am uh, currently enrolled in. Got some of the dinosaurs here. These, these are real classic molds. Of course, the, uh, the Brontosaurus and the, uh, the T-Rex. And uh, I, I have both of these molds, but you know what? I don't have a gray T-Rex. Oh no. T-Rex here has gotten, uh, looks like he has, maybe has some body damage from a fight with another T-Rex. Oh, dang. And they uh, gratefully exchanged the uh, melty T-Rex for a nice, fresh looking one. Oh, that's a cool T-Rex. One thing I like about this mold is you kind of tell that it is a vintage old mold by the way that the uh, T-Rex is standing. Um, you know, now 
in modern times, the T-Rex is uh, portrayed as like legs down this way with his back, his back uh, parallel to the ground. But they used to envision the T-Rex is standing straight up like this. So this is a very old way to view the T-Rex. So I kind of like that, that it was like kind of captured in a time capsule. Now inside the, the main building, they were kind enough to let me keep my melty face to Mickey. Um, but when I asked to exchange in here, they said, sorry, we do have to let you do have to pick one or the other because uh, they're gonna melt back down uh, the other T-Rex and make uh, make more T-Rexes out of them. So very cool. I did I did kind of like the battle damage T-Rex, but I thought this one was uh, was really cool looking. I like the color on that. It's kind of like a almost like a uh, army army green to it. So the Volo Auto Museum, always something new to see here. I, I again, I think it's hilarious that it even they even call it the Auto Museum because there's so much non auto related stuff in there. You have the uh, the multiple animatronic bands, you have the crime and punishment exhibit, you have the animatronic dinosaurs, you got a carousel room, so much more than just uh, just the autos. And uh, though I, I, what I don't like though is this type of band. Uh, usually most places use like a uh, like a wax paper band, but uh, these cloth bands are really hard to get off. So I am gonna try to, okay. I think they actually did make it loose enough where I can slip it off my hand. Cause these don't go, you cannot get these off without, like you cannot break these. There we go, it's gonna come off. You cannot break these like just with the force of your hand. These actually require, a lot of them, they actually do require scissors. And I remember getting, I forget what it was. I got one of these on my arm and I could not get it off. And I did not have scissors with me. I did not have anything sharp with me. So yeah, it was it was a real struggle. And of course we got uh, some Moldoramas slash Moldvilles to add to our collection. We got Blue Goofy, got that green dinosaur. Got the yellow Donald Duck, which I do not have so excited about that and then of course you got the uh the mickeys the uh with or without face there so i always love adding a few molds to my collection which actually my collection is getting too big I, I i i should definitely have not gotten the ones that i already had here i don't know what possessed me but uh, i'll add those to the collection in the bunker when i get back but thank you so much for uh, watching this video. The next few days are going to be intense. We're gonna be doing some uh, some state fair content, so strap in for that. I promise it will be fun. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country filming roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. If uh, you'd like to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon, $3 or more, with your postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop as well as doing cameos, personalized messages. If you'd like a message for yourself or for someone you like, uh, check out the information in the description. It'll tell you how to do that. And uh, of course, all that helps keep this train with car wheels on the track, this train with tires on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, this one's in the back.